Welcome to Against the Tide Media, and we have an awesome interview coming up with Chatting with the Chosen. We'd like to welcome you back. We have a great interview this week. We're talking with Joey Vahidi, Doubting Thomas from The Chosen. Joey, welcome. Thank you for having me. Excited to be here. On behalf of all the fans, we're thrilled. I'm sure they're thrilled. And uh, this is going to be a nice conversation. How's everything by you? No, not too bad. It's been okay, actually. Just uh, looking forward to getting back and getting this thing rolling. Yeah, you, I guess you're going to have some uh, big parts coming up in season two. I I guess so. Yeah, I mean we'll we'll see what happens. Have you gotten the scripts yet for your part? No, not we haven't gotten the scripts or anything like that. Um, I know we're probably set to start around the fall time. From the last I heard, I know the chosen we did a like a little a Zoom reading of of uh, one of the scripts of season two, just about like ten minutes or so. Uh, about a month ago or some, something like that. So from what we heard is, you know, we're looking to start picking up pretty soon, I hope. But you, you never know in this climate, you know what I mean? Sure. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a fickle time, that's for sure. Yeah. You know, uh, The Chosen, that's a great name. Uh, when people are in the arts, I feel that even those people are chosen. You know, you're always chosen for your, your profession. Uh, when did you realize that acting was your profession? that, you know, the arts chose you? You know, um, I actually really owe it mostly to my cousin, Danny. We went to the same high school together. And I remember he was a senior when I was a freshman. He was doing acting, really enjoyed it. I had wanted to go in playing soccer, which I did. I had played soccer for most of my life. So I thought I was going to, you know, move forward with that kind of a thing. And I was debating between an elective class and he was like, you know, you should take the intro to theater class. And I was like, yeah, I don't know. I'm not not really into it. I'm not sure about that kind of thing. He's like, just trust me. If you don't like it, you don't ever have to take it again. And I uh, fell in love with it. And it just kind of went on from there. So how long have you been acting? I've been doing it since I was 16 years old. Um, professionally, I guess, for about seven years now. That's awesome. That's awesome. I've seen some of your stuff. and You, you really... Uh, have a lot of different uh, type roles. Um, what's been your favorite movies in your life? My favorite movies? Um, man, that's that's a good question. I mean, the first thing that comes to my mind is definitely Goodfellas. I grew up watching a lot of those gangster flicks. And that's definitely one of my favorite films. I also really like uh, The Imaginarium of Dr. Parnassus. I know that's the last film that Heath Ledger did before he you know passed away rest in peace um the science of sleep is another one that comes to mind and uh, 40 year old virgin i also like did they influence you as an actor in any way or you just enjoyed them as a as a as an audience member you know watching i think a little bit of both to be honest um with films like goodfellas i would watch that kind of stuff and i just thought it was it was so cool and i i, I don't know what it is but i just love these kind of bad guy characters you know what i mean and the actors that are in those types of films they do such an exceptional job at at making you like them and root for them and i just always thought that was such a cool concept and then of course with films like 40 year old virgin or even anchorman it's just it's so funny and i've i've always tended to like make people like making people laugh in life and in my family and stuff like that. So that's definitely something that influenced me as well. I don't get mad at this one, but did you ever have any doubts on taking roles? <laughs> <laughs> you know, not, I, I, I probably did to be honest. Yeah, I, I probably definitely did. There have been definitely some encounters when I first started out in my career where things just didn't sit right or they felt a little bit weird. And then, you know, as, as you uh, get a little bit more experienced and kind of figure the industry out a little bit, you tend to know what to stay away from and, and what to move forward with. Well, it's funny because one of the fans, Jerry Barnett, had asked that question. Did you have any doubts about taking this role? 
No, definitely not. Um, Dallas made the environment extremely welcoming when I had first gotten the call to, you know, go in for him and audition and whatnot. And that that definitely solidified my wanting to do this. I mean, you know, as well as as an actor, once you're once you're getting these opportunities coming in and out, you, you're not necessarily super picky about what's coming in. You know, you just want the opportunity to be able to do what you love. Um, but Dallas has definitely influenced 100 percent my decision to really move forward with it. So speaking about Dallas, uh, Jeannie McPherson had asked, did you and Dallas know each other before being cast in The Chosen? We didn't, actually. I I had never met him. I'd never heard of him. I'd never heard of the show or anything like that. And then, you know, you get an email one day from whatever it is, your agent or your manager, and like, hey, they want you to send a tape in for this kind of a thing. And then I luckily I got to meet Dallas through that. Great guy. And it looks like you guys have a good time behind the scenes. Uh, looks like a lot of you have finding that camaraderie. Uh, I know you were only in with the one episode in season one. Right. Yeah. Uh, did you grow up in a large family? Because it seems like you're involved. Sorry, in one so again, the connection got cut out. Did you grow up in a large family? And I asked. I did. Okay. Yeah, definitely. Very large family. I want to say I've got maybe 14 or 16 first cousins alone. And then, uh, I have, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a really big family and we're all pretty much like brothers and sisters. I have one sister as well. And, uh, it was one of those things where we were always at each other's houses, you know, when we were kids and things like that. And to this day, we still spend a lot of time together. So I definitely grew up with a large family. Yeah. Well, it looks like the chosen's got to make a large family of its own. And with the fans that we have, this is a very growing family. This is becoming a really big deal. Yeah, 100 percent. I actually am extremely ignorant to how big the show is or how many people it's affected. I mean, I'll, sometimes I'll be chatting with Dallas randomly and, and and I honestly have no idea how big of a fan base it is. And he told me the he told me, what was it, a couple of weeks ago that. Uh, there's a whole Facebook group for the chosen, like a whole fan page. And I, I just genuinely had no idea about that. So it's, it's a cool surprise. And, you know, just thank you to everybody for, for supporting. We, we all appreciate it a lot. Yeah. I think we got great fans. Uh, Matthew Shuey asked, uh, when you auditioned, were you expecting this to be a big global movement? No, definitely not. I did not realize the impact a, a show like this can have. And I, and I think what makes this show different from other religious shows is, you know, with these group of people, because the writing is, is so well done by Dallas and all the other writers, you don't feel like these are untouchable people. You know what I mean? Usually whenever you watch something religious or you're, or you're studying that kind of stuff or even reading scriptures or whatever it is, at least for me personally, I've always felt like there was a distance there. You know what I mean? Like these are these untouchable figures. He writes it, they write it so well that you really feel like you know who these guys are, or they could be your neighbors, or they could be people that you've seen. And I think that's what makes the show so successful is people can really relate to it. That's the magic of the show, because every other film that we've seen prior to this, especially when we're encountering the Jesus figure. Correct. It's, you know, he, it's divinity. It's divinity. You, You just can't go near that. And when you picture these people who lived 2,000 years ago, you don't picture people like us, quite honestly. Right, and, right. And you guys are bringing that out, showing us that they were just like us. They probably were, even if they're using artistic license. Sure, yeah. Some of the, but, but the thing is, I mean, the problems are similar. The lives are similar. So yeah. getting a, a look at, at them through your acting, I think, is really going to win a lot of people over. Yeah, you know, and I and I think that's a huge testament again to the writing and then the the people that they've cast in this show. I mean, everyone does such an exceptional job, um, and everyone is so welcoming. And and you really you really do get to see like you know these people are people who are struggling in life. These people also have love in their life. These are people that are dealing with real world issues. They're not just these you know apostles or these religious figures that just came out of nowhere and now are untouchable. You know, they were all real down-to-earth people, which I appreciate very much. Yeah, now we have a question from Benedict Hackinson. If I, I'm sorry if I messed that name up. Did you audition for other roles as well besides the role of Thomas? It's funny you say that because I've been watching some of the other interviews with the other actors and 
across the board, it seems like everybody has auditioned for the same role. And I, I was also one of those people. So I originally auditioned for Simon. This was, I want to say in the fall of 2018. Um, so I sent in a tape for Simon and, you know, I, I, I felt okay about it, but I, I just felt like, you know, I don't, I don't think Simon is, is, is who I am or my guy and, and really Shahar does such an incredible job portraying him. You know, he's, he's, he's perfectly cast for it. So I sent in a tape for Simon, didn't hear anything back. Usually with, with auditions, sometimes they'll put the, you know, shooting dates on there for you to be able to see. So whenever I, I take for something, I just forget about it and move on to the next thing. Didn't hear anything for, I want to say maybe nine months or something like that. And then all of a sudden I get an email saying, Hey, they'd love to call you back in for the role of Thomas. And I remember looking at it and being like, I think they made a mistake because I, I've never read for this character. I don't, I don't know. Uh, this, this doesn't seem right. Um, but I went in and Beverly, the casting director in Dallas were both in the room and they were just the sweetest, sweetest people I had met. Um, and it was, it was almost like, you know, it, 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 it just blew me away with how much love they showed, which is not necessarily always happening in, in the casting office, you know, because they, it, and it's understandable. They've got so many things that they have to do. So they're just kind of moving through people. But uh, Dallas and Beverly were really, really sweet and took their time and, and made it very comfortable. Yeah, I see a lot of the behind the scenes. There's sometimes a lot of hugging going on and a lot of uh, sometimes praying going on. Let me ask you, what stands out as one of the most memorable moments for you while shooting? One of the most memorable moments. Um, there's a couple, I'd say. One, one definitely that uh, had a big impact on me is I remember the night that we were shooting the scene with the urns when he's turning the water in, into wine. And I remember just before, I mean, I had had very little interaction with the, with the cast at that point. You know what I mean? I, I had just gone on to set maybe a day before. Um, and Jonathan, who plays Jesus, was such a sweet, sweet guy and, and really welcoming. And I remember while they were setting up the shot, I was just off to the side doing my own thing. And Jonathan walks by me and just, you know, gives me a little, a little hit on the shoulder. And it wasn't malicious or anything like that, but it was just a small little thing. And I remember, and he just walked away. He didn't even look at me. And I remember it just kind of hitting me and I was looking back at him and I felt like he, he, I don't know what it was. It was weird, hard. It's hard to explain, but I felt like he just did something there that, that really affected me a lot. And that's definitely a moment that I remember very much. Um, another moment that I remember as well is, uh, Yasmin, who plays Rayma, I remember we were setting up for one of the shots, and right as they, she she kind of zoned out a little bit uh, in between the takes, and she was just standing right in the middle of the shot, and they were about to call action. And I remember we had to call her over and be like, "Hey, you gotta you gotta come back here." And she just she started laughing, and, and all of us started laughing. So that's that's just another funny moment that sticks out to me as well. Is there a lot of laughter on the set? Yeah, definitely. I, you know, it's it's one of these environments that I think is the reason I love it so much is because it feels to me so different from other sets that I've worked on. And the reason for that is because you really feel like every person from the, from the cast to the crew, to the front office, who, whoever it is, you really feel like all these people are really wanting to be there. You know what I mean? And they really feel like as, as corny as it sounds that they're making movie magic. Whereas in other sets that I've been on, it felt sometimes like people were just coming to a nine to five job, trying to get the job done and then breaking for lunch and then, you know, coming back and doing it again. So it definitely affects the environment when you have people that are that excited to be there and joking with each other and laughing all the time. So it definitely had a lot of laughter while we were shooting. So that kind of answered a question I was just going to bring up, which was, has this project been like any others and or is there anything different about The Chosen? Yeah. yeah, you know, just just again, it feels like a very different environment to anything else that I've worked on. And I don't want to speak for everybody else, but I'm I'm sure they would probably agree that the energy amongst everybody is just very welcoming. And, you know, people really want to be there. You don't feel like anyone's a, a prima donna or anything like that. Um, it just feels like we're really all in this together to tell this story. And I think that's what makes it so successful. 
And this story requires that. And it would be so so weird to have the story of love and then have all these other issues going on. So everything seems to be meshing very well with you guys. Yeah, exactly. You know, and, and I haven't been there as long as everybody else. I mean, I, I still haven't even met everybody. But uh, from the interactions that I had with everyone, they were all extremely welcoming and warm and just a, a really good group of people. That's great. Uh, here's a question from Jenny Mastro Giovanni. Says, love your portrayal of our dear Doubting Thomas, Joe. How did you prepare for the role? Were you previously acquainted with Thomas or possibly read up on him in the Gospels? So it's a good question. Um, because we're portraying people, you know, historical people, you, you definitely have to do your research as, as an actor. I feel like it's our responsibility to, you know, as accurately as possible, portray these people in, in the most humanistic way you can. Um, in terms of like having experience with him beforehand, I grew up uh, going to religious schools as well. You know, from kindergarten through eighth grade, I went to a Lutheran school. My high school was a Catholic high school. So we definitely had a lot of religion classes and they, and they definitely taught us that. But I'm sure like most people, the, the, the only real thing you know about Thomas is, you know, he's the doubter. He's the one that didn't trust that Jesus had risen, which uh, I, I'm, I'm sure a lot of people know him for that kind of a thing as well. From the directions you have provided, I see no logical solution to the problem. It's going to be like that sometimes, Thomas. Well, after all, that is a very tough thing to believe. So there's a big call to faith in there. Uh, yeah. What I noticed looking through the questions, everybody had little doubting jokes. That's why I was so I'm sure yeah. not to do that in the beginning, but it just, you know, I, I get you. I yeah. The devil made me do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, of course, I get you. You know, but uh, uh, here's something from Megan DiGiamo. Uh, Even though we've only gotten a small peek at you so far, what similarities or differences do you see between yourself and Thomas? That's a cool question. Um, well, I, I, I think Thomas is a really logical person. You know, I think he's someone that tends to look at things from as many angles as possible, maybe even to a point of pessimism. Um, I would say I'm a little bit more optimistic, so maybe there, there's, there's uh, some differences there. Um, but in terms of similarities, I, I, I do feel like Thomas is one of the disciples who really deeply cares um for jesus very much you know what i mean or deeply cares for his friends I, I i guess i would say um and then i think that's evident between how he interacts with rhema and how he interacts um with jesus upon you know discovering who he is uh so i, I think that would say that's pretty similar to me I'm, I'm very loyal to my friends and family and I, I hold them close to my heart that's awesome uh deborah brown asked do you think that thomas and matthew will become close friends since they seem to be somewhat alike. <laughs> I don't know, actually. I, I, I don't know. I mean, it, it definitely will be an, an interesting thing. And I, I actually haven't even met Paris yet. Um, so I'm really looking forward to, to meeting him and, and working with him. But I, I don't know. I mean, that's, that's something we're all going to have to wait and see. Okay. Well, Jane Mola asks, what's your take on Thomas, the person that you are portraying? Um. I guess, like I mentioned before, definitely a logical guy, definitely has some pessimism in him. But um, ultimately, I think he just has a really big heart. That's, that's the, I think, the most bare bones way that I could describe him. Very interesting. Uh, Barbara Dordunas. Again, excuse me if I said that wrong, Barbara. Uh, wants to know, how has The Chosen impacted your life spiritually, if it even did? Hmm. That's a good question. Um, how has it impacted my life spiritually? I guess, you know, it's, it's, it's probably made me more open in a way. Um, I've, I've always been someone that has believed, you know, things happen for a reason, whether that be positive or negative, and we might just not understand it yet or in those moments. And I think this show has probably pushed me further towards that belief. The topic of religion is always just such an interesting one to me because there are so many of them. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah. And I, I'd never want to be. So go ahead. Go ahead. I, I said it was uh, I was going to say it was interesting because that was one of the questions they asked us as hosts. Do you think that spiritual people and non-spiritual people can make a movie like this? 
Um, I said, of course. In fact, my answer went a little further. I said, the non-spiritual people are, really are. They just don't know it yet. Um, mm, but, you interesting. Know, it, it, it takes all kinds. And uh, we kind of started this by saying, you know, people are chosen for what they do. So Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and another interesting thing I think about that is when it comes to this profession, I mean, our job as as actors or writers or or directors, whatever it is, is is really to just be as empathetic as possible to whoever it is that we're portraying. You know what I mean? And I think whether you're a spiritual person or a non-spiritual person, you have to find empathy in every single person that you're trying to portray. Um, and I think that's something that's it's it's really important for this type of a, a field to succeed, or even for a show like this to succeed, whether you believe or not. Uh, you have to believe in those moments when the camera is rolling that you are these people and that and and that it's a thing. You know what I mean? I think that makes the success of the actor and the role. If you really feel the part, uh, it just might play out naturally. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes it does. You know, and it's always exciting. Yeah, that's good. Julianne Burns asked, uh, what is the greatest life lesson you have learned? The greatest life lesson, um, it's probably a tie between lead with empathy and everything that you do or with anyone that you talk to. And um, also don't take life too seriously. You gotta, you gotta laugh. You gotta learn to have a good time. You know, even if it's at your own expense, it's okay. But yeah. uh Definitely don't take life too seriously. And that helps you in your acting, I'm sure. I mean, those are the things you just uh, talked about that qualify you, and it sounds great. So, Joe, I'm sure you've seen uh, some snippets of Against the Tide Media interviews. Uh, yeah, definitely. I've seen um, little clips here and there. Um, I think I watched parts of Liz's interview. I've seen parts of... Uh, Giovanni's interview and some others as well. Yeah, it's, I mean it's pretty cool. Y'all are doing a great job, and that's just and, and Noah as well. I mean that's it's really cool Noah that he's doing 13, all this kind of stuff. Thirteen years old, isn't yeah, that he doing really, a great job? I mean it really it blows my mind to be honest. For for someone to at thirteen years old just make a YouTube page and a following and I interrupting anything. There he is. What do you have intuition? We were really <laughs> just talking about you. <laughs> Maybe I do. Hey, Joey, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. We're just, we're just, him, uh, Joe, the guy who puts it all together. We're just <laughs> talking you up right now, saying how exceptional it is that you're put this whole thing together and are getting all these interviews. And I mean, I, I mean, I, when I was 13 years old, I wasn't doing any of this stuff. You know, I was just playing video games or playing soccer outside or something like that. But this is, it's really remarkable. You should be really proud of yourself. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Definitely. Yeah. And it's good to get you to meet you, Joey. Yeah, likewise for all of you. I mean, you know, and you, Anthony, this is this has been such a fun time and such a cool interview. And I, I, I really appreciate you all having me on. Yeah, yeah, it was it was a lot of fun. It was yeah. a lot of fun. We're happy to have you. Mm. Yeah, yeah, Anthony, yeah, I I'm glad you decided to wear something for your interview. <laughs> I got it. Look. There it is. There it is. <laughs> Wait, it's got to come out of the water. Like, <laughs> there you go. Oh, no, I forgot to hit record. Now I'm only kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so Matthew Shuey asks, what's your take on the future success of the series? I... I I wish I had an answer for y'all on that. I, I really don't. I mean, like I mentioned before, I'm I'm really ignorant as to how huge this show is or or how big the fan base is or how popular it is. I mean, there are times when I'll open up my app just to see, you know, where where things are at and just the views keep increasing. Yeah, I think I saw they have on the app they have like that special content uh tab or whatever right. the deep dive or whatever it is yeah yeah and i looked at that i saw one video and i and i saw the video was cut off so i looked at it and it said zero percent on rotten tomatoes and i was like oh that's pretty funny like let me <laughs> let, let me see why that's the case and i clicked it and it said 100 percent. and i was like wait a second what you know and then just more stuff kept popping up like on imdb it's it's rated fairly high and you know a whole bunch of other 
streaming services and, and platforms that have ratings on it. And I just, I was genuinely shocked. So to answer your question, I, I have no idea where, where the success of the show is going to go. I, I do. I, I do. I guess it's more your, of an opinion, Joe. I think they're just asking your opinion of it, you know, and not. I mean, I guess I, I would love to see it keep moving forward, you know? Um, and I, and I do anticipate that it will just with how many people it's reached so far and, and not just the impact it has in, in America, but globally as well in, in other countries. Um, so I, I do hope it keeps moving forward. Well, you know, Dallas's goal is to get 1 billion uh, views. Uh, I think he's going to get it. I mean, we're not even a quarter of the way through yet. Yeah, you're right. I mean, still still season one, There's there should be more to go. So we'll, we'll see what happens. It's pretty exciting. So you do follow along and you try to see what everybody's thinking and doing and saying about this. Yeah, I mean every every now and again I'll I'll check in and, and I'll see, you know what I mean? And it's it's always a a pleasant surprise to see how many fans there are. And and again, you know, we we appreciate all of you for for the support and everything like that. Um and I, I'm just excited to keep moving forward and telling the story. I, I have such a fun time doing it, and that's totally selfish because I, I want to keep doing it for me, you know. Um, but I also want to keep doing it to bring joy to other people to, you know, help them forget about whatever their problems are for the day or to help them confront things that they want to confront or just in, enjoy themselves. You know, it's, well, it's I think that's player. our job. Say again, you're a key player, you're one of the 12, so you know, yeah, we'll see, we'll see what happens. Yeah, a lot of head going, and yeah. uh, of course, you have nothing going on now because of the pandemic, so you're just kind of sitting back. But are you looking at any other roles to, c- coming up outside of the chosen? Um, you know, there, there have been some tapes coming in here and there, but just like you mentioned, because of the pandemic, it's been such a weird time in our industry. You know, the union is doing as, as best a job as they can to make things safe for everybody, to make actors feel comfortable to get back to work and and make uh, the crew feel comfortable as well. So um, I don't know. As of right now, I'm sure the answer is just like everybody else in all their other professions is we don't know what's going to happen. We're just kind of going along and, and writing this thing out. Yeah. Yeah. I, I know that all the fans of The Chosen can't wait. I know the fans of Against the Tide can't wait. They're all one and the same as it is. Uh, I can't wait. I, I uh, binge watched myself when I did this. I started watching the first episode late at night because I came across the uh, the link. And I wound up falling asleep during episode three because it was about one or two in the morning. So yeah. I picked up right after the next day and I, I rewatched episode three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Right, right. So that, that was really hot stuff. But that, that's what it does to you. It's, it's just a magic yeah. it has. Yeah, you're right. You know, it's, it, again, it affects a lot of people. I, I actually had a teacher of mine from high school who I haven't, you know, spoken to in, in years um, send me a message via Facebook and just saying, you know, hey, I don't know if you remember me, but I'm this person and I just want to let you know our family watches The Chosen and we saw you on it and we just wanted to say how happy we are that you're, you're, you're doing this and, you know, uh, wishing you and the rest of the cast, all the success in the world. And I just, I was, I don't know why, but I was just blown away. You know, I didn't, I, again, someone that I haven't spoke to in years is, is watching this and enjoying it. And it's just such a cool feeling. You know, I haven't heard anybody that I know who's watched it say, yeah, it's okay. Everyone Mm. has been using your words, blown away. Uh, it's just it really is a a good good production yeah and I, i'm i'm really happy about that and that it, again it really is just a, a testament to dallas and his team and the rest of the cast and how exceptionally talented they are and, and such such cool people you know what i mean it's 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 a, a beautiful thing to watch it really is yeah well you know listen on behalf of the fans uh, on behalf of Against the Tide, we want to thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us. Uh, we wish you good luck, and uh, we look forward to all your upcoming episodes. Hopefully, you'll stay in touch with us as we go. Yeah, definitely. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. And uh, to all the fans, thank you so much. Hopefully, we can start um, making some more for you to watch. that will be great. We're all looking forward to it. Thank you, Joey. Thank you. Talk to you soon. 
Dress me like a lamb for the slaughter. Pour me in your cup. Should've known we'd bring trouble. Trouble gonna find you here. Trouble. Hey, it's Dallas and the creator of The Chosen, and yes, season one of The Chosen is complete. All eight episodes, they're available right now. You can look up The Chosen in the App Store or Google Play, and we're easy to find. You can download it and be watching within minutes. And in fact, it's unprecedented technology. You can connect to almost any device you have directly, and you don't even need a subscription. So I hope you check out season one of The Chosen right now. Can you hear me okay with the headphones? Yeah. Great. Yeah, you sound fine. How about me? Because I'm using a different mic on, on a different camera. It sounds okay? Yeah, I can hear you well. What similarities <clears throat> and differences? What I want we'll to see do what is happens. write myself an introduction here because unlike no you, problem. I'm not good in front of the camera. <laughs> I've shot for 20 years. I can yak, 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 put me here, and I'm like, uh, oh, what did I want to say again? I get you. On behalf of Against the Tide Media, I guess against <clears throat> the Tide. So uh, welcome to Against the Tide Media and welcome to another Chatting with the Chosen. I'll let him go into his intro and then I'll say, uh, let's see if I can do this in one or, one or two takes. Welcome to Against the Tide Media, and for another, you see, and for another, another, another chatting with the chosen, another, come on, Joe, help me out here, you're an actor. What do you need? <laughs> what do you, what do you need from me? Uh, I need an intro here. Uh, welcome, uh, okay, <laughs> this is funny. Uh, welcome to Against the Tide Media. Welcome to Against the Tide Media, and we have an awesome interview coming up with Chatting with the Chosen. Okay, and he rolls his thing. Uh, okay, so we'd like to welcome you back. Thank you, Joey. Thank you. Talk to you soon. All right, I think that went well. Is that okay? I think so, yeah. You know, I, what I don't understand is that I've seen a couple of these like two hours long. I can't figure out. <laughs> I couldn't. I couldn't. I couldn't yeah. picture. I couldn't picture all this. I, I was listening. <laughs> How are you? Good. I'm listening, and I'm sorry. No yeah. Worries. So I'm gonna I'm gonna cut the recording now. Sorry, Noah. We're gonna chit chat without you watching us. <laughs> well, you know what's gonna happen with this interview? It's gonna have a couple of hundred. And then the next show that Joey's in, it's going to blow up. They're, they're going to go back and all go look at Joey's interview. Watch. Yeah, Joey, the character of Thomas, it's, it's, he's going to become... Huh? What happened? I don't know. What happened? We're here. There we go. Yeah, Joey's going to become a pretty big character in in The Chosen in future seasons. I heard Dallas talking about that for season two. Well, he's a big character in, in the storyline itself, so yeah. Were you doubting that he was going to be a good? <laughs> there it is. Doubting he was going to be a good character. Here he comes. You're getting it now. <laughs> <laughs> we hit him with a couple of doubting questions. We did. He wasn't we doubtful did. on anything, though. It's uh, yeah, it should be an exciting time, you know. And I'm I'm definitely looking forward to what's to come. And I'm sure you guys' fan base is going to keep growing for your show as well the more that uh, The Chosen keeps moving forward. So it's pretty much going to be like a win-win for everybody. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You got any questions for him while you're on here? No, Say you again. Any questions for, I, I asked him, no, do you have any questions for Joey since you're here with us? Uh, hmm. We did something a little different. Joey yeah. asked me the questions and I answered them. We did, yeah. <laughs> You know, yeah, he asked he me, actually, so, you know, how did you prepare for your role in The Chosen? And I said to him, uh, 
Sorry, Joe, I wasn't in the chosen. Next question, <laughs> yeah. please. We actually are recasting Thomas and Anthony's gonna be gonna be playing them. So, you know, it's we're we're gonna be interviewing him next time. <laughs> <laughs> So see, you said you wanted to have fun. So we did. We totally, I threw the questions uh, over to him. He asked me and I answered them and it was great. Exactly. Uh, Not much content, of course. I hope Joey told some about himself. (laughs) A little bit. Yeah, he did. He he did. He did. (laughs) Okay, well. This interview uh, about Joey or Anthony? It was about we'll Joey. We, we really featured him. Like we we closed up on him when he asked the question, and then we went to the group shot when I answered. Because remember, the answers were short. I had no answers. <laughs> when he said, "How was it working? How, what was how was it behind the scenes?" I said, "I don't know, Joe. I'm going to tell you again. I wasn't in it." Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. It was so Joey. Uh, another thing that we always do, we always make sure our that uh, our guests are comfortable with all the footage in the in the interview and if there's a part that they'd rather not have in there then they can like give a little time stamp sure uh, we're yeah. still recording so there, if there hasn't been anything yet there could be something i mean i have this little gag reel that i put at the end if you haven't seen the other interviews with just the fun all the funny moments from mm-hmm. in the interview and things well like you know what noah that this is funny that you say that because when we ended the interview i shut the recording off so did joey and we were having this personal chat but when you came back on i turned the recording back on uh just so we can get you involved and we're having more laughs now with you here than we did before see you just brought out the humor in us there you go <laughs> yeah <laughs> So you so, are the chosen uh, army, huh? Uh, yeah, the chosen army. Do you have I any? Like it. You have any chosen swag, Anthony? No, no. It, wait, it, it took me how long to get this one? How long did it take me to get this one? Noah, tell Joey. <laughs> hey, right. Hey, I just had an idea. My nose itchy. Now my nose is itching. I gotta do it. Here, I can uh, uh, stop my idea to kind of. Who's the kid? Who's that, your twin brother? Know. Your t- twin brother, Alfie? <laughs> That's an old picture. <laughs> so, so did you want to you you actually recreate that? You got a couple of extra minutes, Joe, to do that if you want to? Sure, or if like you, you want to. Yeah. A question? Something Let me you ask you a question, think. Noah. Oh, I have uh, the, the uh, I had the, the waiting room turned off. I was going to say, how did you get in without me admitting you? But I turned the waiting room off. Ah. Uh. Okay. That's how you were able to get in. So, so you planned. Yeah, see, you gonna, planned on that. That's a, you knew we were in the middle of the interview. You planned on interrupting our interview. <laughs> so I kind of bummed you out when I didn't catch you b- coming in. See, I I messed up your your big play there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Anthony, I dec- I'm glad you decided to wear something for your interview. <laughs> I got it. Look, there it is. There he is. <laughs> Sh- wait, it's got to come out of the water like. Sh- <laughs> there you go oh no i forgot to hit record now i'm only kidding <laughs> oh, nice. i just wanted to see this is my first interview so you know i i thought that that would shake you up pretty good like oh man <laughs> now we it. did okay we did okay joey did a good interview and he's been very, gracious, very gracious for giving us the time yeah, yeah you, no, thank, thank you all so much. And uh, probably the outtakes at the end as well. So that's fine, like you did for my host intro, the host mm-hmm. intro and the outro. It's <laughs> so funny. Yeah. Intro that's and outro? Is, that's what they called. <laughs> I thought there's somebody behind me be like making funny faces or something. What the heck? <laughs> they called intros and outros. <laughs> you think I made that up? <laughs> yeah. I just yeah, think I did. you made it up. <laughs> What are you, 13? <laughs> <laughs> Very funny, athlete. That's right. That's Mr. Athlete to you, sir. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's probably <laughs> wondering why How I called that. Was that, a, was that a misspell on one of those typos? Yeah, or, it was a uh, typo. Spell check? I actually called you athlete, and so now it, it just sticks. So. I love it. That's a great nickname. <laughs> so he's been calling me that, so I keep telling him that's Mr. Athlete to you, fella. I like it. <laughs> nice. We have a lot Very of laughs. Nice. We do. We have a lot of laughs. 
No, uh, nice. this was a very good interview, but not a lot of laughs. Not to say it wasn't funny. It just mm -hmm. wasn't. Uh, uh, I just I had such a horrible time up to the moment uh, getting into this. I I couldn't I couldn't be funny. I couldn't think of where to go with funny on this one. I just went got down to the basics of the interview. Yeah, you know. But I uh, again I asked Joey how he thought it went. He said it went well. Yeah, I thought it went okay. You know, I mean, felt comfortable. All and right. if you guys need, I mean, if you guys need me again, like I was saying, if you guys need to do any reshoot or something like that, or pick up, just, just let me know. I'm, I'm happy to go, hop back on. All right. Just remember the shirt you're wearing. That's all. Yeah. Thank you. We really appreciate that, Joey. Yeah. And maybe, maybe we'll have you back again sometime, like in a zoom room or something. Hey. Yes. Okay, so you're here. I'm here. And I just sent an email to uh, Joey to see if he could jump back on. But he might be, like, just out of there, you know? Mm -hmm. But you know what? It, no, I accidentally cut off the meeting. But it, it, it cut out at an appropriate time, by the way. You had just finished speaking. Ah. Oh. You, you know, we were really saying goodbye at that point. It was just not a good way to say goodbye. That's all, but uh, I'll let you hear the, the very last, the end. Okay. Yeah, I thought it went okay, you know, I mean. Felt comfortable, you know, we, yeah. met the, we, we talked over. I'm leaving. Yeah, I'll back on. Where are you going? Okay. Uh, just remember the shirt you're wearing. Let's go on. Yeah, thank you. We really appreciate that, oh, Joey. Good. Yeah, and maybe, maybe we'll have you back again sometime, like in a Zoom room or something. Um, in a Zoom room or something. And boom, it ended right there. You wanna you wanna make me a, a co-host so I can start recording too, or or allow record on me. I don't think he's coming back. I think we're pretty much done. Okay. Uh, oh, Goodbye, funny. Joey. Goodbye, Joey. Goodbye, Goodbye Joey. Joey. <laughs> Joey. Goodbye, Joey. Goodbye. I should be happy about this. Actually, I just feel bad that we didn't end it. Send that to me. Send that to me. I'm putting that in the outtakes. I'll think about it. You know what? I might have to look through this video before I even send it to you. <laughs> I, I sent him the link, by the way. I relinked to this. And if we hang out a few minutes and talk, he might join, wind up joining us again. Uh, mm. Goodbye, Joey. Goodbye, Joey. Goodbye, Joey. <laughs> Goodbye, Joey. Goodbye, Joey. Joey, Joey, Joey. <clears throat> Man. Joey, Joey, Joey. All right, he's not going to come back. He stepped out. He said, I didn't realize, he said, I'm so sorry, but I stepped out. I didn't realize y'all wanted to continue. And I said, I right, no big deal. We just wanted to say goodbye the right way. Uh, not like that, be cut off, but stay out. Don't worry about it. Okay. Uh, I guess. So stay out, Joey. <laughs> Let me tell you something. This is the best laugh I've had all day. It's been such a hard day. It's been such a hard day, doctor. I don't know where to begin. It all started back in 1963 when I was born. And all from that time, uh, things have just been really going downhill. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. So. I'm going to stop this record. No, really, I just, what did you say? That just happened. And we have an awesome interview today. And it's not, I'm watching, I'm be looking down instead of looking up. So what? Just say something stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to say chosen because then I have to say chosen again if I can sound right. Um, on behalf of Against the Titan Media, we have. Okay, I'm. All right, rah, 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 rah. Welcome to. How about walking to? Uh, anything. Come on, you're killing me here, Anthony. So you're killing me. Awesome say something. <laughs> With that, as we chatting with the chosen. Uh, yeah, right. So you got the chatting with the chosen down. Now to put the rest of it together, <laughs> dumb head. <laughs> See, I'm an equal opportunity insulter. Sorry, you I even insult myself. To get this all done. Oh, yeah, you can.
Oh, it's okay to insult yourself. I don't believe he used this stuff. <laughs> <laughs>